All right, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Lobby Call Podcast. Uh, I know we took a week off due to technical difficulties, but uh, we're back. Um, we got Dan Foster as usual. We got Fabo. Yo, yo. Special guest Fabo. We got D in the house. Um, I'm going to put y'all IGs. Yeah, it's whole thing. Y'all got it. Um, so, yeah, Fabo. Uh, was born in San Diego, raised in St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, fire writer, fire artist. Y'all about to find out very soon. This dude's fire. Um, I think Kalani re- recently said he's your favorite artist and you don't even know it yet. Uh, she's probably right. She's definitely right. Um, he's been an artist for seven, seven years? Something like that, like seven years. There we go. Um, he's worked with Louis Lastic, who we, who we've had on the show before, um, on episode four. Jay James, Sayara, Sayara. I can never pronounce her name. S. Sierra Sean. Sierra Sean. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Um. Sierra. 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 Put a little pizzazz on her. You know what I'm saying? Sierra Sean. Me, of course. And um, others, of there we go. Joe Budden recently said he uh, he had a sleeper song of the week, even though he called you Fabo. But Fabo. It's, all good. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let him do his thing. I'm gonna let him introduce himself, and uh, you know, you tell us a little more about yourself, Fabo. Um, what's going on? What's going on? I go by the name of Fabo. Um, pronounced F A Y B O. Fabo P H A B O. Um, if that helps anybody. But yeah, there we go. We in here. I'm a singer songwriter <laughs> extraordinaire. I've written for um, the likes of Stevie Wonder, Ooh, Marvin Gaye, Double Flex. Yo, <laughs> yeah, I wrote for Marvin Gaye back in what year was that? Yo, 1980, yeah, 86, 87. I thought I did my research. Whoa. A, lot going on that year. a lot was going on that year, as you can imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, those years. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I'm here. I'm glad to be here. Alive. Well. There we go. COVID free. Right. Facts. You know what I'm saying? There we go. Uh, usually I, I um I have people on Instagram ask questions. Um I told them that you're gonna be up here, so I'm gonna ask a couple of questions from IG. Um at J Mars at J underscore Mars underscore universe as has the writing process been w- better or worse for you during the pandemic? Um I know that we had write, writing sessions and yeah, um, yeah. while we're here, so. Um, I think it's been better for me mm. in the sense that, like, I found a new style. You good? I found yeah. a new style. Like, I found a way to freestyle more as opposed to, like, writing. Even even in the studio sessions that I had um, in the years prior, I might not have written it beforehand. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But like even letting the beat play in the studio and writing to it, like I, I got over that. I'm more so just I sing a melody, and then I, you know, nah, go in there. I, I remember thing. like when I you put, in there, you be yeah, in there. Like, so like, oh, damn, be in there too. So y'all know, y'all know hey. how it go. Like um, for the viewers and listeners who don't know, like I work uh, when I first um, worked with Fabo, it was, it was with like I said before, Louis Elastic, and um, he when I like really like stuck out with him was that he would write so fast like Hmm. just like you know you hear hear the melody hear the beat all right boom give me give me 10 seconds oh yeah song's done (laughs) (laughs) like what what was your process your like your writing process like why is it so fast like that uh because i i relinquished power to the ancestors to give me a melody (laughs) That's straight up. Yeah, right, yeah, I say, right. bro, I, I, get, I relinquish that power to them to give me a melody. Um, that's why I just like to go in the booth and just get it. I don't really like to sit with it too much. Mm. Um, the downside to that, finding that quick writing style, um, doing that is getting married to certain things that you have saying. Demo-itis. That man. demo-itis is yeah. a real thing. I say that all the time. Even, even so much so to where I hear like a... I was talking to one of the homies the other day, and he was like, "You know, we could, we can master one of your songs right now and just replace the, the, yeah. the code on it, the number on it, whatever, blah blah right, blah. Right, blah. Right. Put that in there, 
And then he was like, the funny thing about that is there'll be a whole slew of people that would like hear your song for the first time that love it as is. And then there's those that know the rough shit that you had going on and yeah. like that don't exist no more. So the essence of the song ain't there. Mm. So yeah, I um yeah, it's a it's a toss up for me, but I definitely enjoy where I'm at with the writing process, I guess. It's really just a freestyle. Mm. That's all it is, bro. Yeah. Just me freestyling now. Now I feel you. Wait, so when you say like you relinquish like melodies and stuff to the ancestors, just like give you things like is like you mean writing for you is like kind of a spiritual experience. For oh, yeah. Part. Yeah, definitely. Has that always been like that or is that like more quarantine? thing? It's always been like that. I feel like the court. I feel like quarantine made it to where I was able to sit with myself long enough to know that to figure that out. Mm. Um, exactly what's going on, exactly why other things don't work, you know. A, a taking a, taking an old song and putting over a new beat why like it's not a bad it's not that it's a bad song but it's not you can feel it when it's not the moment mm. for sure bro mm. yeah so um i definitely feel like i i figured that out during quarantine all that so, to answer dan's question okay. um, yeah so like you you've been an artist for like seven years right how has that how has has how has that process been like how was your journey like um it it's been cool, it's been eye opening. Once again, another quarantine uh, <laughs> epiphany. It's kind of like well, I started out rapping. Yeah. Okay. And so, because at what point, if you just rapped good, you could get on. Mm. And then, I like I switched over to the singing shit because I felt like I could do that well enough to be For able sure to get that is. shit off. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, you know, and, and really Drake made it to where like you could do both at the same time. So I started out doing both at the same time. I would get like a rap verse and then a singing verse. Uh-huh. And that was like my thing. Like all the way up until it wasn't. For one, for one, I don't know, some reason I just woke up like, yo, I just want to sing. That's so, all I want to so do. So now you just sing now. You know, you know yeah, it was just, doing. it was too, I was just, I was getting drowned out, I felt. Just doing the rapping shit. Mm. Mm. Like it just wasn't, it wasn't fun. It wasn't as fun to me. Sure. I feel you. It yeah. wasn't as soulful. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. Because, yeah, like, for me now, like, I'm just, I start off being just, like, a musician. Just, like, the bass player, guitar player, mm-hmm. behind different artists or whatever. And now I'm, like, I'm transitioning into being an artist. So, for me, it's, like, an, a year. Yeah. Per, yeah. Like, eh, well. About nine months. Okay. I've been in an Maxwell Hunter. You okay. feel me? So it's just like, especially with, like you were saying before, pan- the pandemic and everything, it was kind of like a blessing and a curse because if the COVID did never happen, I probably would not have been putting out. I, I probably wouldn't have put out the EP and started this journey as a musician. Right. And, um, but, you know, I would still been playing, you know, playing behind artists and stuff like that. So it's just like, and I'm, st- I'm starting to learn, like, okay, s- just different aspects of, you know, being an artist. So mm-hmm. it's just like, you know, it's a mm-hmm. learning process for mm-hmm. me. For yeah. sure. Think, um, do you think the quarantine... My bad. No, you good. Do you think the, the quarantine helped with your, your creative process? I think we talked about this last episode, too. So yes and no, right? So number one, I'm staying... First off, more I, I, I'm already a homebody, but when uh, the COVID thing happened, I was forced to stay at home and like, okay, really sit down with my creativity, really um, be able to uh, polish the ideas I had and stuff like that. So it was a positive thing in that aspect, and it really kind of forced me to like, okay, focus on this because you don't have nothing else going on. You don't get, you're not doing tours, you're not doing shows anymore. Focus on this. But on the other side, it's like all right, traveling around the world that always like fuels that creativity. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like you got to take the good with the bad. I hear yeah. that. What about y'all? What y'all think? Like, I, mean, as, I, I think the pandemic definitely helped the creative process. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I'm saying? Just because it was a new experience. Right. So, I mean, just kind of being a new person, you know, uh, you have to create. A, a new way of doing life now. No, nah, so, no, nah, real. You know, What's up? So everybody is being kind of creative in my eyes, you know. Hopefully, but it, I think it kind of translated into making music as well, too, for sure. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That, that makes sense. sense. What about you, Dan? Um, I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> I'm beat, man. <laughs> like, 
No, I think it's. It, I think as a musician that also like produces and writes and stuff like that, it kind of puts you in a difficult position because like when you're on tour and stuff like that, even if you don't get to like shed shed on a regular basis, like you're still kind of staying sharp because of how often you're performing and how like how accustomed you get to being sensitive when you're on stage and stuff like that and just being able to move in uh, music, just basically getting in where you fit and what you perform. And because we haven't toured or like really performed at all in the last year, you know, that stand sharp on your instrument is kind of getting, it's, it's getting hard to stay sharp. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like I'm becoming a much better producer than I was this time a year ago. Right. You nice. know what I mean? So yeah, it's, yeah, no, blessing and a curse situation. You know, it's, Staying sharp at both things at the same time when you really want to do both things is really difficult when you can't perform, you know what I'm saying? So it's like I have to actively make sure that I'm, um, when I'm not producing, I'm practicing. And because like it's not part of my job necessarily anymore, it's, mm -hmm. it's difficult to remind myself to do that. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, ah, fuck it, I'm just gonna, I nah, worked on three songs true. today, I'm gonna go watch Netflix instead. You know what <laughs> yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, I, I yeah, should I be fucking shedding. You know right. Saying? Nah, that's facts, man. Like, I, I was just, Jamming with uh, we had Elijah Fox jamming uh, mm -hmm. last time. It was a couple days ago. Yeah, and like I was playing bass, and I was like, "Oh, I'm trash now." No, dude, like, that's a thing. <laughs> that's one hundred percent a thing, man. Yeah, bro. I feel like I feel like just being sensitive and and playing with other people, like piano. Even though like I I play, it's like I'm not doing anything difficult anymore. Mm -hmm. So you're doing, doing like, loops like, and shit. Yeah, like, just, exactly. Like doing really money. complicated shit and like highbrow jazz stuff is is becoming foreign to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I felt like if, if we sat in the same kind of sheds that we were sitting in, like uh. Remember, remember back when we were doing all the like the big ass jam sessions over here? And Corey yeah, Henry came we had heavy and, hitters yeah, coming through. Bro, just, we yeah. had killers in here, yo. And I was like, Corey Henry is a legend. Yeah, no, it's it's it, it's, it's fucking nuts, like, man. Him and Young Hunter for me. Uh -huh. Young yeah, Hunter yeah, yeah. and Corey Henry. Mm -hmm. yeah, Corey, it's, it's Corey Henry wild. is definitely that dude, bro. Like, bro. Yeah, yeah, he came through. It's like, yeah, bro. What? Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, like yeah, and like the kind of shit we were doing back then was like, you know. Like, we didn't have to think about it. It was just easy. It was like, oh, no, I'm going right. to get in where I fit in. You know, I'm going to do the solo. Right. We're going to kill. And I feel like now, if we're going to do that caliber of shed today, <laughs> bro, I would have my ass out here looking stupid, man. I would look I would look so dumb, man. So, ah, real talk. Yeah, I, got, I got to get back on it for sure. Yeah, you know. yeah man. He cold, though. Like, Dan cold. No. Yeah, Dan's so, nice. Like, so him saying that right now is just, that's just some musician shit, like. Cause to the cause to the naked ear, like the average ear, or whatever, bro. It's like, come on, bro. What are we talking about? I only noticed cause my cousins would spend the night before church, Saturday night, mm -hmm. trying to rehearse for like what the songs were, cause they had a song a song list. For yeah. First service and second service. Yeah. yeah. So we watching hella Corey Henry, hella Yon Hunter, and they like. And it sounds crazy to me. He's like, ah, just the, yeah. Ah, I messed up. I'm like, bro, that sounded crazy. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah, I just that's just some musician shit. Dude, I mean, like when your best friends are killers, though, it's like, ah, oh, shit, I gotta stay out. Cause I mean, they'll call you out in a hot second. You know, yeah. like, yo, if I do some bullshit, you know, like regular listeners are gonna be like, oh, that shit was cold. But if Curry in the room, he'll be like, nigga, you fucking suck, yo. Like, it's, <laughs> yo, Seth, bro. That's funny. Seth stuff. told me I suck all the time, man. Like, it's just like, so yeah, man, I gotta, gotta stay on my P's and Q's, man, even during quarantine. Nah, I feel you, man. Absolutely. Um, I know we talked about this before. When's the project dropping? For for views and listeners, but when's the prize May. dropping, man? May, May, May. It's gonna drop in May. Okay, yeah. It's gonna drop in May. I have a single dropping on April 9th with uh, Destin Conrad. Shout oh, out Destin. Oh, uh, uh, Dan just ha he just dropped a uh, whole EP. Yeah, man. And uh, shout out to to Louis, Louis and man. Dan. Conrad, Los, man. yeah, man. Greg Strauss, yeah. yeah that man. project top to bottom, it left a lot of people upset. <laughs> not because it wasn't good but because you just let, like we want more more of yeah. yeah no it's, it's short man I was, and it, dude and i was kind of hurt too because like we worked on so many records i thought there were gonna be more records on the on the album but i think it was like not including skits i think it's like five tracks or something like that yeah you know so it was a lot of skits yeah i look forward to the next project you guys drop i know y'all yeah. got a bunch in the tuck and whatnot so and Destin's grown as an artist too. No, Destin, yeah, yeah, yeah. Destin's young grown. as fuck. Bro, bro really, was he like 20? 20, just turned 20, like 20, going on 21. Yo. Oh, stop. Yeah, 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 bro, yeah, yeah. he out of here, yo. Like, it's like, yeah, Destin's yeah, super out of here, man. Yo, yeah. that's wild. All jokes aside, I think, like, in the year that I've been here, that's probably my favorite project that I've worked on thus far. Not for sure. You know, the Kalani record was sick. You know, working with Masego was always awesome and stuff like that. But I feel like the, the music that I worked on with him felt like I was. Like, it, it's something that I would write for myself. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, yeah, that was... Shout out Dustin, man. No, definitely. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for your album to come out, bro. I already, I already know. I had. I, I, listen. Whatever. Listen. It's, it's gonna be cold, man. Yo, listen, man. Listen. It's gonna, it's gonna be a bop. It's gonna be a vibe, bro. In a moment for sure. Yes, How many sure. records did you make that didn't make the album? Because I feel like you're sitting on at least like two, three hundred records right now. Like yes. just for shits and gigs, right? Like, oh, yeah. That are never gonna come out. Yo, he not gonna pitch them. Like he's not gonna pitch them. They just gonna sit on the hard drive somewhere and just be like hot for no reason. Yeah, man. no, no, no. I, I got, I got plans for some of those. Um, for some, sure. for some of them, I got plans for some of them. Yeah. I think since I met you guys, um, since I met you guys, I think Louis and I knocked out maybe, maybe like thirty something. Mm, 30 something just like high quality like yeah, uh, yeah fully like i got stacks because i do like 65 tracks mm-hmm. and stacks for sure yeah. on minimum with my song so it's like fully produced out and louis mixes be sounding damn near they give you demo artists because you really don't even you be like bro that's cool like that like that's yeah, good yeah, no, yeah, you yeah. know louis could like mix and master things by himself he man. could Just keep it 100 yeah, yeah. he could he yeah. definitely could do that, but you know, I respect him not taking that stance on not being that guy. Yeah, mm. I respect that for sure. You know, he is Louis Lastic, and that's that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. So we were talking about just, especially for me, just being like a, a new artist, and you've been doing this for seven years, but I feel like you, you you're slept on. Like I feel like you are you are definitely top tier, like top tier talent. You know what I'm saying? I feel that and I respect that, bro. Thank now, you. real talk, because I Thank you. when I first met you, I looked up your I went on Spotify. I looked I listened to you, listened to your music. I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You know what I'm saying? Like, why are you why are you not up there yet? Like everybody should know about this dude. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So who do you think, besides you, of course, who are some of the artists you feel are slept on? Who are some of the artists I feel I slept on? Okay, before I answer this question, I want to preface it by saying that I did have a conversation with Kaylani, and she 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 put something in, in perspective for me where she said, you know, essentially she was like, as artists, we go and we spend all this time making these bodies of work for our fans or for our consumers to listen to and enjoy and this, that, and the third. And then there are these awards that are put in place mm-hmm. to then kind of diminish the value of the album if you if you lose. You right. get what I'm saying? No, that's the thing. And then from there comes the the slept on. That, be, right. that like the the sleep, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That becomes like the the saying that comes with that. And then it's like, well, what if the artist is really really proud of all the work that they put into this and they're kind of like happy with the heights that it they're they're content with that. So I understand it's like how I feel, artists I feel slept on. That did change my perspective on that, mm-hmm. though, for sure, you know. And uh, in terms of me, I feel like if I would have blown earlier than, than what's about to happen, it's like I don't even know my sound. would. I don't even know if I would have had the hunger to even find the sound that I'm at right now. Right. Yeah. Keep it honest. To be so honest with you, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, so, I'm glad for like that grit and that. It comes out in the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can feel it. It's real intentional. Uh, and so, you know, I would often wonder, like, if I'd have got that deal, if I'd have got that mm-hmm. whatever, it's like, yeah, I already know what would have happened. Right. I wouldn't have this sound. That yeah, I, have. Yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, yeah. You know, so I wouldn't I wouldn't change that for anything. But in terms of artists that I feel are slept on, um, I feel as though, I guess, marketing-wise and, and in terms of, like, Super Bowl placements and stuff like that, mm-hmm. I feel like Dom Kennedy definitely deserved that and he almost okay. got that because i remember he did something for the seattle seahawks yeah and that shit was crazy because he's independent and like did yeah. some while they cut him a wild check and he was rapping about it and shit and i'm like yeah okay cool we got that but i feel like more of that was owed to bro i feel like i should have seen him on just like <clears throat> they should have invited him to the bet awards at least mm-hmm. you feel me like just stuff like that just don't really make sense to me yeah. um but i get it mm-hmm. at the same time i definitely get it i feel like Mila J. Mm. I feel like okay. Mila J is slept on. Um, and she, I used to um, work at a shop on Venice Beach, and she came in there. She was coming there with her dad, OG Chill. And somebody like was like, you don't know who this is? Like pointing to her dad, you feel me? And like, I'll never forget. 
somebody was like, no, who? And like, she was like, that's it's uh, this is Janae's sister or some shit like that. Something to that effect. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, you, this is a person. This is someone who creates music, dope right. music. You feel me? She's from LA. Like she, you know, real person. And it's like, I just, yeah, I don't like, I don't like seeing people in those situations like that yeah. at all, especially when they're dope. Right, right, right. So that's another artist that I feel, you know, definitely deserves her flowers. I feel like Seven Streeter okay. is another artist who, after you leave a girl group and you're the girl in the girl group, you're supposed to have that run. Yeah. I feel like she definitely deserved that run. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could go on, but yeah. I really, I study, I study music and shit and, mm-hmm. and trajectories and shit, so... It's a lot of people I feel you. that I feel definitely deserve that. I don't know what it is that they, what lane it is that mm. they, what it. I don't know. Yeah, 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 but I know it is. Yeah, definitely, man. For sure, it's definitely like I know for me. I feel like, um, and even just even now, like this artist, I'm still like discovering. Like, oh, mm-hmm. you know, what I'm saying I just heard this uh, this cat named um, Ruben James. Okay. Yeah, you put me on to Ruben like yeah. last week. That I, shit yeah, nuts, that's when man. I found out about yeah, like Ruben. Yeah. I never even heard of bro. Now I need to go check bro out. Right, yeah. No, it's it's like that, man. Okay, yeah, for sure. He's fire. He, first off, he's a musician too. Like he's he's fire on keys, mm-hmm. piano player, and guitar. He plays everything pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, he's from London. Okay. And I think he's he's played with like Sam Smith, um, and some other people. But he it's just his music is just so soulful. And it's like, oh, okay, y'all, y'all do that out there in London too. Mm. Okay, it's fire. Um, I think I talked about Love More before. She's dope. Um, Bruno Major. I don't think Shout people like talk. Dude, I love Bruno. Major. Yeah, yeah, but a lot of people it's don't really. You know tight, what I'm saying? Man. Like, because like, I mean, how many like bedroom pop fans are there? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> bedroom like, pop. That's. Dude, I mean, that that's that's kind of <laughs> what it is. It's yeah. Like, you know, but it's it's. I mean, like that's that's what the genre is called, but there aren't a lot of artists in that genre. You know what I'm saying? Because like the genre itself isn't the most popular thing, but listening to his music, it's some of the most like. I don't yeah. Want to, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 just fucking hard, man. Yeah, man. Ray, Raven, Lene, her. I fuck I think, with Raven. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying like we. I think we both um we both had like placements on Insecure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that was dope. Cool. Um, hey, bro. Yeah, man. It, like I say, it's, it's like. That's you know, some shit. It's a few people. What that's about you, uh, Dan? I've been on like a Remy Wolf kick for like the last month, mm. and like I mean, it's, it's it's not like she's not, it's not like she's not like popping, but like compared to the kind of music that she makes and like the quality of music that she makes, I feel like she should be fucking out of here by now, man. Mm. You know, she's she's doing well, but it's like I feel like it's it's some of the best music I've heard this year. I think right, so Remy, she's tight. I, um, I think yeah, out. she just she just dropped a track with Sorry. uh yeah with uh Dominic Fike. Mm-hmm. Who's who's fucking dope, and uh, uh, cautious clay. Mm. Like he he, he did mm-hmm. for her. Okay. You know, that's tight. Uh, uh, Georgia Georgia Ann Muldrow. Oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah yeah. Slept on. Oh man. yeah absolutely. Oh my god yeah. absolutely. I I I heard uh, I first heard her back when I was in like high school like senior year first mm. year of college. I was like oh she's fire. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, for sure. And she's been in the game for a while. Dude, I didn't even know how. Dude, I got hip like two, three years ago when I heard uh, "Dimension" for the first time. That should fuck me yeah, up. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. So yeah, Georgia, she's tight. Uh, who else? No. I'm like, I'm the person sleeping. Why? Oh, <laughs> like, I am sleep, bro. It's you. You would sure fuck with sleep. Georgia heavy, man. Yeah, she's, yeah. Her her ideas are are fucking nuts, man. Mm-hmm. It's it's pretty sick. I think yeah, the, those two. I'm probably definitely tapping sure. in all these artists that y'all just yeah, listed. Mm-hmm. What about you, D? Um. I say off the back, I, I think Ombre is pretty slept on. Absolutely, absolutely. I she gonna be out of here later too. Yeah, yeah. she, yo, she, she one of the. Yeah, she doing yeah, she, it. Yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. Doing this already, like. But it's like yo, like, she's hella talented. Like, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. try. I'm gonna try to get her up here. You try to get. get oh yeah, get for sure. Like there. her album, the last one, uh, Pulp was. was yeah, nuts. that's fire. Yeah, it's like I. Yeah, I probably listened like, man. Countless yeah. times, honestly. Right. I, I remember when, like, I first, uh, when we first moved out here, and, like, I was just tapping in with Louie, and, like, um, the first time I met Ombre, he was like, oh, yeah, we got we're doing a session with Ombre. You want to come, come through? I was like, because me, I don't know who anybody is, for real. Like, I, I'm keeping on it. I don't really listen mm-hmm. to a lot of music. I'm trying to do better now, but I looked her up and listened to some of her music. I'm like, 
Yeah. Oh, she's tight, yeah. man. That, yeah, I'll that. pull up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she's yeah, one of my favorite sure. writers to work with for sure. I have like ten. I think between between the two of us, or maybe probably three of us, we probably have like upwards of like 15, 20 records with Ombre. Like just in yeah, the yeah, room. yeah, yeah. She's just, she's just, wild, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Her her next project is about to be nuts, man. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Max and I went to the uh, like her. She had a writing she had a camp. writing camp up in Malibu, and like we we're up there for a week. So sure. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> like def- definitely maybe. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, we were up there for like a week. Los came through, uh, Hendrix. yeah. Mm, shout out Los. Yeah, Los Hendricks. Yeah, he he pulled up. Uh, DeAndre Harris. He pulled up. Bunch of cats. Just say Andre up. Harris, man. I'm sorry, Andre Harris. <laughs> DeAndre. You Harris. said that like everybody knows who DeAndre. <laughs> I know who that is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, but I know who that is. You said a whole. Yeah, DeAndre. Uh, Michael Harris is. Yeah. Or you said that like everybody knows who Andre Harris they is. Should. Man. They should. They should. No, they absolutely should. I love butterflies. That's my jam. Right, but you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been hearing his name so much this year. Yeah, yeah, sick, man. I think we're working with him but, this week. Where Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. That's gonna yeah, be tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. Who was a uh, Childish Major pulled up? That dude's fucking wild, yo. He's dope. It. One of the yeah, bro. shout out Childish Major, man. Right, that dude is dope as fuck. All right, um, we just, like I said, we're gonna stay on the same thing. We're talking about being artists and whatnot. <laughs> oh, also Smino before before he moves. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout Smino. out Smee. Shout out Smee. Uh, yeah. But I feel like Smino's already like. No, he popping. He not slept on. People know he fire. You know what I'm saying? Like he's already. I think he he's already a nice tape last year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, do you think it is important for an R&B artist to appear single? And uh, is it different for male and female artists? I, I was talking with my girl. Um, <laughs> now, I was talking with my girl like um, a few weeks ago. And um, just like me being an artist. First, no, was first of all, what? <laughs> what happened just now? <laughs> what the fuck? Yo, I wish we could he instant replay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Turn into a whole pterodactyl just oh, now, yo. What the fuck just happened? <laughs> Bro. Nah, but like, you know, just as as my my artist career is like That's a good question. Yeah, it is. It's you a good know question. as my my artist journey's progressing and whatnot, it's just like do I have to appear like I'm single in order for, um, you know, just to, I don't know. Does it, is it a thing? Does that okay. affect anything? Because like I posted a pic- picture of my girl on Instagram mm-hmm. and lost like, like 500 followers I lost about like, <laughs> I lost like 50 followers. Yeah. That's a thing. And man. they were like mostly women. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was like, so what is the correlation between, you know, being an artist and appearing to look single? Cause I know, um, so go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll let y'all have your all right. So, but. single is it is it is it important for an R&B artist to appear single? Mm-hmm. No, it's not okay. I don't think so. I don't think, think so. It, no, married, they have to be careful with the marriage shit because uh, there's no coming back from that for a fan. That's true. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, they yeah, want to yeah. honor that or not honor that, whatever mm-hmm. they choose to do. I feel like also with the if you do have a girl. You know what I'm saying? Or if you do have a boyfriend or whatever you got going, it's all in how you present that. Mm. To, it's all in how it looks. If it's aesthetically pleasing, you see what I'm saying? Because if you, because mm. Miguel, Miguel and Nas don't have this problem. Right. She's still a popping model. He's still a popping singer. Yeah. Nobody, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah, it's yeah, all in yeah. how you present it to the world. Okay. Now, if they out taking J.C. Penney's pictures... You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> With the backdrop and shit, that look a little bit more like that look. That look crazy. Yeah. Low key, it don't even match the aesthetic. Uh, it just has to be aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, I'm with that. I feel like for. I feel like being married is kind of marketable once you hit superstardom. You know what I mean? Mm. Like like being, being Gucci and Keisha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, man. Like like. I don't know, especially today, because you know we're talking about cats like J Cole and stuff like that. He dropped you know folding clothes and shit, and was like, "Oh my god, that's so great!" But if he was like you know an R and B singer, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like so much of of being a successful R and B singer is having the illusion of being sexually available. True, you yeah. know what I'm saying? That's why like D'Angelo can go on stage and take his shirt off and shit like that, and everyone's still gonna lose their shit. If he was married, you know I what I'm saying? Now, I feel like yeah, oh, I okay, not, not 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 now. <laughs> you know, I'm not, not right this second. <laughs> But I mean, no, he go get it back. Yeah, he go get it back. Coming from my Aquarius brother, crazy right? Yeah. Now, 
<laughs> but yeah, no, I feel like before before Brianna was popping, you know oh. what I'm saying? If she was just doing the R and B thing, like I don't I don't think that she would have been as successful if she would have been married and she would have been singing about being married and stuff like that. No, no not 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 in R and B. I feel mm-hmm. like if you want to talk about that, you have to wait until you're popping, popping, and at that point, it's marketable. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It, seems, it seems that way to me anyway. No, no, I, I feel you. There's definitely something like, like, like I said before, I posted a picture of my girl, and like I'm just like starting to be this, you know, I'm Absolutely. still uh, uh, establishing my brand and what I want to look like, but I lost like 50 followers. I don't know why, but you know what I'm saying? And, and It's just all in how you present it, man. I kid you not. Ariana Grande's been damn near married twice. yeah. Nobody said, but nothing. she's already she's on that superstar status. Okay, though. cool. On that, she is on that level where like it, it don't really matter. But you know, Eric Bellinger's married. Mm, yeah. Who? Yeah. Eric Bellinger's married. Eric Bellinger. Yeah. Did we, did, did we know us. that though? We did. He put. He talk about Lamaya good all the time. They post each other and everything. Like they got their own thing, and that's mm-hmm. like dope. And you could kind of hear it in his music, where his music has matured a lot as mm-hmm. a result of that. And it's like, do you want? Not to cut you off. What do you think about um, like, what do you think about uh Tiana Taylor? Like isn't isn't she married mm, and she does the way they give it up? It's yeah. Like, you know, Look, that aesthetic yeah. is everything, bro. I feel like when they did the when they did the fade shit for Ye, uh uh-huh. with the lambs and shit, yeah. that's their aesthetic. They're both swaggy, like right. they give it up. They wasn't like walking down the, even their wedding was even the ring he gave her was is different than anything else. He gave her like a ruby red something. You mm. know what I'm saying? They didn't do the whole like regular ceremony. Yeah. It was just it so, was different. It just has to be different, bro. So pretty much, if you if you're a couple and your that couple looks swaggy and, and I you kid know, you not it's with cool. the, as but if it's like too hallmark, it's like oh mm, nah. Wait, that's okay. like, oh, that's as soon as it gets there, it's like okay cool like that's that on that. Uh, you definitely got to keep it interesting, like for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And to your J. Cole point, like, we don't see pictures of him and his wife ever. Same thing with, with Kendrick. So it keeps that separate from... Yeah, come on. Yeah. Sure, but I think once you start once you start making songs about it, even if people don't see your wife or see your, your husband, your boyfriend, whatever, like, once it's in your music, it becomes a part of your brand. And I think, I I, I think once he was popping enough to start singing and rapping about something like that, it didn't matter. You know? Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't know. So I, do you think that you can build... Like, if you're... If your relationship isn't aesthetically pleasing, do you think you can still build a successful career as an R and B artist if your relationship isn't a part of your brand? Repeat that one more time. <laughs> it was very wordy. Yo, very wordy. wordy. <laughs> very wordy. One more time. <laughs> oh, so if if you got an ugly girlfriend, right, <laughs> like, okay. do you think you can build a successful R and B career, but so long as your girlfriend or your wife or whatever isn't a part of your brand? Like, if you're saying you got to be, like, swaggy and stuff like that for it to be yeah, successful. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you say if you have an ugly girlfriend, that's, that's wild. Like, I mean, <laughs> like that, that, that's subjective. That's subjective as well. No, no, it is very subjective. So I don't really know. know. I mean, like, but I don't, I don't really know if that has ugly. anything. You can have a bad girl, but it's like, at the end of the day, there are there are different, um, I don't know, like, factors that, that exist. Mm. If you're, like, a, let's say, for instance, let's say you're a Playboy Cardi type artist, right? Mm. And you have like a church girl girlfriend. Mm. It's like that contrast doesn't really go for like your fan base to consume that mm. well. Yeah. You feel me? I got you. So when you say aesthetically pleasing, you don't mean like actually look good. You just mean it has to be cool. It has, has to, to be, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, it has to make sense for the brand because now your brand is how you're making all your bread. Got you. Mm-hmm. You know what that I'm saying? Sense. So you have to stay on brand with that. It's like you just randomly, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm pretty sure if Tiana Taylor and Iman Shumper were like, yeah. We're not gonna curse anymore. Mm. Like we're gonna, you know what I'm saying? This went like super clean cut. It would just mm-hmm. kind of be everybody be looking like what? Yeah, yeah. I feel you. I feel you. Like Marcus Houston is married right now, and he went full Jehovah's Witness. No one like that's so like what? Yeah. I haven't heard the name Marcus Houston. I, in a yeah, it's been a minute. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> like, there you go. There you go, bro. Uh, <laughs> so, do you think it's the difference between uh, a male and female? Like how they <laughs> how they. Like a female artist and a male artist, y'all think it's like a difference between like okay. I would like First, to say no, but I feel like probably. Mm. I mean, it it. I mean that's situational, but I rarely see a female artist that has like a guy that's not in the industry. Mm. 
I rarely see a female artist that has like a dude back home. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. Yeah, that's there's saying. a lot of like artist producer relationships, that, man. That's that. that's fucked up. We gotta stop. Yeah, <laughs> hey, stop, stop trying to smash your coworkers. Yo, yo stop yo, doing this, it. When the studio becomes the hotel part, yeah. <laughs> like what? Like what are we doing? <laughs> oh. so, bro, I think we we're, we're, we're talking about that. Uh, me and, uh, and and Max and some other cats just about like you know when we were in college or in school and stuff like that and we we're all studying music and we always try to link up with singers like oh I know we should have a do you write do you, you just look like you sing you look like you sing a little bit you know do you want to pull up to my crib you know because, like I'm a producer you know you could come through and write have a jam session whatever and they're always just like yeah no that sounds that sounds like <laughs> <laughs> bro and it's the most like it's yo and it's so fucked up man like. You would think that stuff like that, like once you get to professional level, nah, that's it would just... stop. But it doesn't, man. It like don't. Just every time it, it really studio, don't stop. Just, it really yo. don't stop. I mean, that, you know, it's a professional. But I think that's just. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think that's just like natural for people to do to like find common, find people that they have common that's interests true, with. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I make music. You make music. Maybe this could be a thing. This is how we can like figure out. Yeah. You feel me? You don't want to go to her. Talking about basketball, and you should. <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, yeah, I mean that makes sense. that's true. That's you know true. I mean? If you have common, common, um, you know, interests and shit. Like yeah, that. like yeah. to link up, but like, don't you don't use like musical influences to like pave your way around and shit like that. You know I mean? To mm-hmm. your point, the R and B singer homegirls hate when dudes talk about music. They don't like that shit. Mm-hmm. Really, they don't like that shit, bro. They're true. tired of. Dudes walking up to them, talking about their career, mm-hmm. talking about the song that they liked, and talking about music. They want to talk. If you come up with some other shit, I guarantee, if y'all been trying to figure it out, if y'all come with some other shit, that might get you a lot further than this music uh, shit that y'all trying to break the ice with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not to mention, it's a lot of weird, like y'all said, the producer-artist relationships that actually become relationships mm-hmm. and form themselves are cool. But what about the hundreds of other situations that didn't make the relationship cut? You get what I'm saying? That's a yeah. thing, too. And that's a culture in and of itself, too. Where it's like, you know, I ain't gonna name no names, but I've definitely, I, def- I know that, I know this exists, bro. You know what I'm saying? I know this exists. Like, <clears throat> I know this exists. I done had the homegirl hit me on the, like, yo, I'm, I'm with so-and-so. I'm like, word. And I know, I know she don't, she don't drink. Like, she don't drink lean. Mm. Mm. I'm like, word, word, word. <laughs> <laughs> You know Yo, saying? that was a real Lotus statement. Too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, she, she turned, she turned the camera. She's like, look who I'm with. Oh, and did oh. this and this nigga slurred. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, hey, so are y'all working on music? I was like, are y'all working on music? Uh, well, we're listening to beats. I'm like, oh. oh I, said, Where? I said, what happened? She said, the magic words, the engineer couldn't come. Oh, oh. man. So now it's a hotel room, but it's like it's not on me. <laughs> it's a jam set, you know what I'm saying? It's like this the vibe, you know what I'm saying? But it's like that's just Yeah. You know, I feel that. It could be comfortable, it could be uncomfortable. Mm. But it's like, you know, that culture does exist for yeah. sure. So like if you're if you're talking to like women or whatever, do you have to do you have to actively remind yourself to turn off the the musician in you, like the artist in you, to like not talk about music in the industry and stuff? I mean, keep it a buck, like when it comes to this industry stuff, I keep mm-hmm. it industry. Word. Like, I don't really dibble and dabble in my workplace. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I do have an interest, for sure. Mm. So, it's like, I'm, I'll am i be focused on that. But, that. Um, yeah, no. I don't. I realize how far I've gotten not, not doing that, bro. Mm. Yeah. What? I'm the cool, I'm the coolest nigga in the room. Like, on me, I'm. I'm safe everywhere because I have no, I didn't, I didn't mess with you. I didn't yeah. mess with you. I didn't mess with you. And it's like, and I come, I just went to a video shoot the other day and I was just talking to the homie, um, AJ Sardin, who was on uh, Degrassi, if you don't Shout know. Shout out AJ here. We was around some sh- like strippers <laughs> at the video shoot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we was around some strippers and like. Some scrippers. They was having conversation like, they was just like. Like, it wasn't what it was. I'm just like, oh, man, this is why. Like, I'm just like, okay. But, like, we stepped outside. Me and AJ was smoking. I was just like, bro, you know this don't exist. He was like, what? I'm like, bro, we are in a room and, like, not making it weird. Like, they feel so comfortable that, like, everybody everybody felt comfortable there, bro. Right. So, it's like, 
Yeah, like rewriting that where like mm-hmm. you can come where where this industry can truly be a workplace right. where people's really getting that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah not yeah. a segue. Not let's get a song because there are some engineers, producers, whatever that go and get two songs mm-hmm. just to get to that third song. And it's like that third song, that third session it was like really what that first session was supposed to be for. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just stop the ulterior motives, bro. You know, yeah. we making art or we not, and it just it gets yeah. slippery. Nah, I feel you, man. <laughs> it gets slippery for sure. Facts. Um, yeah, you you tweeted that you leaked a lot of music on SoundCloud, uh, and I know the patience required when you put music out. I feel like I sound like I'm reading, but it's all good. <laughs> oh, and That's I know prompter, bro. <laughs> <laughs> nah, what I, do I know, you th- think <laughs> is the 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 be- best part of, yeah. of being? In the all right, and I know the patience required when you put music out with a label. Trust me, I know that because I've been anyways. Um, what is your least favorite aspect of the, what are you guys least favorite aspect of the music industry? Um, from what I've seen, from what I've seen, um, my least favorite aspect, like I've seen it from the writing side. Mm. Mm. I yeah, cause you have both, you have, a, you have the, uh, the, the, the artist side is very, the artist side is like, if, if let's say writing credit was like my credit, I fucked up like my. My artist credit is my business credit. I'm starting at zero, so I don't really have much, too much experience on that side. Right. But for the writing shit that I've been through, bro, mm-hmm. man, I don't, man, that, yeah, that's yeah. really what what fueled me even leaking shit on SoundCloud. It's mm-hmm. like I wouldn't even have songs to put on SoundCloud had it not been for folders and folders and folders of songs mm-hmm. that didn't even make it to an artist. Right. The cold part is. When you up there writing, you don't even know that these songs not making it to these artists, to these said artists that you in here writing also, these songs they for. they not even getting the, the Bruh, music. Bruh, it's not even making it past the motherfucking A and R's. Bruh, sitting on the A and R desk. Yeah. So it's like a a, a uh, never ending hamster wheel, and you up yeah. there. You feel what I'm saying? And I recently had an experience where I went up there with Key. Me and Key went up there, uh-huh. and we sitting in the lobby. You know what I'm saying same couch, same table, same everything. You know what I'm saying? They got security now, though. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's, a, that's a, I don't know why they have security now, but I won't. I ain't asked why they have security now. But you feel me? We in there and we sitting, and the dude that we were waiting on comes and he sits down. He's giving us the whole rundown as the, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. I came up there on some like, I didn't want to turn down an opportunity, right? Like, but I realized I had been up in this building hundreds of times, right. but I was willing to put that aside, just. Just so that I didn't give up on the opportunity. Cause I'm asking God, you know, more, you know, all that. Right, right, right. So I'm up there, man. Somebody's assistant comes out the room, and I kid you not, she's turning off the air condition, bro, and she's singing as she's turning off the air condition, bro, like singing, like what she's doing. Like, ah, 69, about to put it on 60. And I'm thinking, like, what that? What's that? Malcolm X? Me? Like, oh, <laughs> that brother's starving. Like, this sister's starving. <laughs> She's starving. Like she's really like, yo, can, everything she did, throwing stuff away. She's making a so, making up a song about it. You feel yeah. me? And I'm like, ah, oh, she's hungry. Okay, for yeah. sure. So that's what. Okay, cool. Mm. Go into the room, and I don't really, I don't boast about myself and all I've done and what I got going. So mm. it's like somebody might think that I'm still a hungry writer, like I was in in 2015. Like, mm. which I am a hungry writer, yeah. but they might think that I'm, I'm uneducated in how this whole get down goes now. So my music gets played and uh you know, Dallas is in there, a couple other people are in there, whatnot, and my music gets played and it wasn't until I play I played like three songs, no reaction. Song with Ombre plays. Who's this? I was like Ombre. For sure. He gets up, walks out, my music's still playing. Another assistant of his gets up, walks out, maybe like maybe 10 minutes after that. There's one dude left behind these sliding glass doors, and he's bro talking to him about, mm-hmm. about hot wings. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody was just, they checked out. Like, we yeah, talking about yeah. chicken yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel me? He eventually get up and leave, like, you feel me? And then it's just me, the dude that set it up, that was pressing for it, the whole, the, the whole get down to happen. Mm-hmm. And we enter in the room, he leans over to me, he goes... Hey, uh, I want you to know if he if he didn't fuck with your music, you know he he'd have told me, bro. I said, hey, bro, it's cool, all that. Like you don't have to you don't have to do all yeah. that, bro. I, I seen what happened. It's yeah. cool, bro. I've been I here peep, before. Yeah, that's I, I peeped peep, the yeah. get down. Peep. He like, no, 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 no. It don't suck. I was, oh, I know, nigga, it's cool. Yeah. I, I know that. Yeah. Like it's cool. But to see that up close and per- again and realize that mm. that's the same thing going on right. and the same characters that I was assured would not be in the fold for for sure was peeking their head through the door while I was in there too. They still up there. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, this, okay, God, for sure. So I think for me, it 
you know, it definitely it definitely helped me see exactly what I'll never do again, exactly what I'll never involve myself in. Right. It's exactly a learning process. A learning process for sure. So I can't say that like I hate that aspect of the industry because I feel like I got homies right now mm-hmm. that are equally as juiced as I was in 2016. Mm-hmm. And I only, I'll give them advice when they want it, but it's not even up to me to go ahead and be like, right. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't want them to walk themselves down a dark tunnel either, but it's like that excitement. I don't ever want to shut off nobody's yeah. like, you know, tell you the real. You Absolutely. get me? Yeah, yeah, no. Nah, like, that's I, not I, it. I that's not it. Yeah. What about you, uh, Key? Um, I mean, I'll probably say my least favorite aspect would just be like the egos you run into sometimes. Mm. Like, you know, um, people just thinking... You know, I don't have a problem with nobody thinking like high of themselves. You know what I'm saying? I think everybody yeah. should. You feel sure. me? So, like, I don't really mind that. But then, like, some people just kind of a little disrespectful or, you know, rude and things like that. Uh-huh. And it, like, that just be kind of whack to me. No, 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 no. And I'm an energy person. So, like, when we, especially when we're in a room, you know, creating and stuff like that, mm-hmm. the energy got to be good, you know? Right. And then in comes this one person who's, you know, off and, kind of just messing up, up everybody up by, by. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying so that just and I'm kind of new so I don't really have the stories like bro do mm-hmm. but you know what I'm saying early on that's just kind of like something I don't really rock with nah I feel you me. that's a thing that's definitely you know? a thing how about for you um I feel like well not like I said it's a learning process right so a lot of times and just from what from what I've seen what I've seen so far, um, you know, bridges burnt. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh man! No, 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 no! no, no, no. It, it's just like <laughs> no, 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 really, like, uh, no, 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 like just from, from just from what. You know, people, 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 I, uh, people I've talked to and, and, and who are just, you know, also in the industry. And, you know, a lot of times uh, labels will like, you know, how things are between artists and labels, right? I feel like artists get taken advantage of um, by labels, by maybe advertising. I don't know. Just different things. It's like, I don't like how the, the, the dichotomy between artists and label. And especially if you're young and hungry and, and, you know, a lot of times you get fucked. You know what I'm saying? True. And they know <laughs> if you're young and hungry, you get fucked. Yo. <laughs> or, no, what? that's real. No, no, I, fact, I get that. Though, yeah, they, it, it's like, okay, they come in not knowing anything about, you know, the industry and how it works and, and, and how, you know, if, if, if you let it, you know, you get fucked in the ass. And <laughs> 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 I'm just saying, like, you, you get fucked and, like, you know, it, it, it's, I feel like when it comes to artists, they're the ones creating, the, creating, they're the creators, they're the ones who are making the songs, making what's hot and making, you know, whatever. And they, the they get the, a lot of times they get the short end of the stick, you know, so, and it's not even just about artists or not about labels or anything like that, but, you know. I just just the power structure how it is. It could definitely be more fair. Yeah. A yeah, lot yeah. more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I feel the same way, man. Because uh, I feel like it's, it's kind of a dream job, man. Like, we kind of live in this bubble where we just get to create every day mm-hmm. to, like, pay our bills and stuff like that. Yeah. This, this shit is not real. You know what I'm saying? This doesn't get to happen for yeah. the vast majority of people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, yeah, so that it's... Part. Yeah, man, it's... I feel like on the creative side, I don't have anything to complain about. Like my least favorite part about the industry is the business side of the industry. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. There we go. That's that's that's, that's what I was trying yeah, to articulate. Yeah, no, yeah, no, I agree with you 100, percent man. Because especially when you're working with cats that you don't typically work with or that you don't know well enough to trust and stuff, mm-hmm. you know, it's it can get real shisty out here. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like it's Facts. it can get real. You know, oh, you don't deserve this percentage because you're just a loop guy or. You know, it's it's right. I'm just like really, bro, because you changed this hi hat and you're asking for like 25. percent You know what I'm that saying? Shit. Like it's <laughs> that shit play, no. yo. That shit play, <laughs> but it's a real that thing. Shit is nuts. Yeah, it's a yeah, thing. That shit is wild. That's man. industry as fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
bro. That's or, industry as fuck. Oh, sure. I was in the room. I get fifteen percent. No, yeah. bro, that happens all the time. You know, you know what I mean? So that's industry as fuck. So yeah, it's that's that. I think that's the part that I hate the most. You know, but bro, no, we get to wake up in the morning and go to a session and make songs for eight hours. Yeah, or ten hours. Or yeah, a it's, day, it's, or you know, like it's. That's just tight. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. Like, nah, there's, nah, yeah. There's no downside to that, you know, except, you know, financially, if you're still trying to figure it out. But, like, you know, like it's it's pretty sick, man. It comes, though, and I, I, I'm i glad you said that because that reminds me how far, even, you know what I'm saying, the team, me and bro, like how yeah. far we're about to go and everything because mm-hmm. really the egos, like bro mentioned, that's the thing, you feel me? The, the splits, the clearances mm-hmm. and all that yeah. shit, that's the yeah. thing, too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, I like being in a position to be like, yo, get the fuck out. A lot of people don't have that 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 opportunity to even have a creative space to be like, yo, 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 mo- yo. somebody's attitude or mood and energy is off as fuck today and it's not me. So somebody got to get the fuck out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bro be hitting niggas with the, yeah, I'm going to leave. And when I come back, the vibe better be back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Start lighting Palo and shit. And I'm like, yeah, that feels good to be able to do because a lot of people yeah. can't do that shit. Yeah. They got to really go and sit in them rooms with five other people, four writers, uh, two of them have Grammys, one of which is just there trying to check the temperature, another one is just there trying to size up competition, mm-hmm. and all that bullshit. Yes. I've, I, I'm i fortunate enough to be like, fuck all that. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not doing that. Now, you know what I'm saying? Knock on wood, because I know that the day will come where I will be you know, in them yeah. rooms, but y'all know how I give it up, bro, I, and I don't dumb that shit down for nobody. I'm just... Show the respect. Yeah, I get a respect. All that puffing out the chest don't really mean shit to me because mm. I really don't. I really don't care about none of that shit for real. Like, I yeah, bro. You could tell who was like really. You could tell who was really humble and cool mm-hmm. and and all that and could really like come to the crib and your, and their parents not trip. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Be a guest at the homie crib. Mm-hmm. You could tell who was that and who wasn't within mm-hmm. ten seconds of meeting somebody. Yeah. Right, you know what I'm saying? Can I leave you alone with my mom and trust you not to say some dumb shit when she start grilling you with questions? Like I'm I'm gonna go up to my room real quick. Can you hold it down in the living room for me? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I, I know those characters that exist, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's just real it's just real easy to see like what to steer what to steer clear about here in this industry, man. Uh, yeah, man. Like yeah, that's a yeah, that's definitely a thing, bro. That's a thing. Yeah. See they're not seasoned enough to even know that that's a thing, mm-hmm. bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That you don't shit in the guest bathroom. Like, you just don't. You just don't go to the homie house and shit. If you can hold that, you go to the crib. Like, that tell, that shows me a lot about a nigga, bro. You shat in my house, like, on first meeting. Bro, you can't. <laughs> you can't this is a dire emergency. Bro. Like, you're about to shit your pants. Bro, like, literally. Choices between shit in your pants and, and shit in the And, and making it home. Yeah, like. Or to Jack in the Box. So it's like, you can't. <laughs> bro, find that. a Starbucks. Or something. I don't know you like that. You, or something, yeah. bro. You know what I'm saying? That, that tells me a lot about someone, for sure. That's so funny, man. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Yeah, man. So we talk, I talked earlier about just like, just like how about, how I feel like you're about to like do the damn thing, right? Just with everything, just with, with accolades, with uh, just acknowledgement, everything. Do you mm-hmm. think you're mentally, emotionally prepared for fame? For fame? I think. Um, and, and can anyone really be prepared I'll start with you, Kay. Um, first off, ready is a myth. Okay. Preach. So let's get that out the way. Okay. So I do feel like I'm, I'm mentally and emotionally prepared for fame because it wouldn't be coming to me if I wasn't. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I'm I'm aware of that. Mm. I'm aware of that. And I, I do feel like the quarantine helped a lot mm. with that mental and emotional preparation because, yeah, a lot, whether people speak it or not, there was a dark moment during quarantine where there was no light at the end of the tunnel. I didn't know when the shit was going to end for real. Mm. You know ask what I'm saying? Ask me how I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ask you know me what how what I, I know. <laughs> and I'll tell you so. Yeah, bro. That's a real thing. Yeah, like, bro. I don't, I don't think, I don't think without that, I, I would have uh, had the fortitude, mental fortitude to be able to like accept, appreciate all the blessings I'm getting right now. Mm. Shake some of my survivor's remorse. Right. I got a lot of homies back home that's just, I don't even know if they care to figure it out at this right. point, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like that mindset wasn't blessed upon them. It was blessed upon me. It was blessed upon you. Blessed right. upon us to make it happen. I, that's not my That's not my doing. That's not my fault, you know? So to answer your question, yes, bro. I do feel like it. I'm prepared for that, for okay. sure. What Damn. about you? 
Um, yes, right. So, He's number right. one, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm, like I said before, I'm, I'm gonna keep preference, uh, preference, preferencing this. Like, I'm, I ju- I'm just starting out, so I mentally I have to understand. Okay, I'm, I'm new, you know what I'm saying? But yes, it's a, it's a lot about um, getting out of my comfort zone, right? Mm. Since I'm new. I'm not used to, I'm used to being the back guy, supporting guy, you know, playing behind an artist. Mm-hmm. So, um, just the thought of me being being the front guy is, it's like, okay, a little uncomfortable for me because I'm not used to it. But, yes, I think I am instantly prepared. I know there's a lot of other things that come with fame and just like, you know, the women and, and, and you know... <laughs> yeah, we talk about another uh, podcast. No, but um, After the podcast. Know, <laughs> never to be recorded. Right? <laughs> Y'all some dogs. Nah, 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 nah. nah I'm, I'm reformed. Anyways, uh, you know, women being financially responsible. You know, when money actually real, real, real money starts coming in. Right. Um, you know, just being disciplined. I think those are the three three main things uh, that you kind of have to have mentally, in order to be able to uh, to 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 really embrace fame because it's going to be a lot of just like you know temptations, whether it be whatever type of temptation, whatever your vice is, especially out here in L.A. True. You know what I'm saying? Like mm, you can find all of them, anything. Facts. <laughs> facts. So like you know, them. I feel like you got to have that. Mental fortitude, like you said before, you have to be disciplined. Um, you have to kind of uh, uh, already have the preconceived notion of, okay, what you're willing to do and what you're not willing to do. Um, and just being True. financially responsible. You know what I'm saying? So I think if you have those those four, um, you know, you, you'll be straight. And, and keep that, the, your circle, make sure you got some solid dudes in your circle. You know what I'm saying? Mm, have yeah. solid people around you who will like, Keep you humble, and you make sure you're not doing nothing stupid, and and, and you know you gotta have that that balance. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, man, I, I think I'm, you know, what I'm saying, <laughs> sound ready, man. I'm ready, you super ready. You know, I'm ready. Ready. let's go. I'm, I'm over here trying to like get back in shape and whatnot, yeah, and man, that's you know. another one. That you gotta have that one. Um, you know what I'm saying? Well, I, he ain't say. He said. He said mentally, emotionally. He ain't say physically. I mean, he ain't say. I, are I you physically that, right? ready for fame? Nigga? <laughs> yeah. That's an important one to throw up there, bro. I, mean, I feel I, like you're. <laughs> I mean, but even even um, health wise, like mm-hmm. you know, performing and yeah. you know, all, that's not. Yeah, that's, that's a workout. That's yeah, that's, yeah. You know what I'm that's, that's, that's a work. That's you see Chris Brown? Yeah. You yeah, see like Chris Brown singing and doing all the dancing? Like, like, how, dude? Simultaneously? You feel me? So, <laughs> bro, I could spend like three hours in a gym. And then like... I can't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, like I could spend three hours in a gym or I could spend, I could do like a 45 minute show and I'll, like the 45 minute show will always make me more tired than the gym has ever made me, bro. Every time. Hell of course. Yeah. It's like, not even a, if I'm not jumping around it, it's it's not that. It's like a, it's gotta be a mental thing, man. Yeah, I'm, like, I think exhausted it's a mental, after every show. Yeah, it's a mental and spiritual thing. Like yeah. you're giving off your yeah. energy through, you know, music. Yeah, yeah. That's a thing. Like that's yeah, I'm on tour every show. I'm just standing on a platform playing bass. I'm not yeah. running around, not doing anything. <laughs> just a bass and a two not step. Yet. You know what I'm saying? For hour fifteen, just well, this. Yeah, That's how we get. playing bass and like, like y'all get done. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go to sleep yeah. now. What's going, on? What's going on? So uh, yeah, I, I feel that. I think yeah, I think that's um, like physical health and, st- and stuff like that is for sure mm-hmm. important as well for mm-hmm. fame. Yeah, you know what I mean. Facts. I feel like y'all touched on a lot of good points, like. If you are gonna be ready, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah, yeah, for sure, touch on all of them. But I don't think anybody can can be ready. So like, yeah, that's a, that's, that's the thing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so, I, I get what you were saying, Fable, but like, me. even if you're not ready, it's like you ready because it's coming to you. That's if right. God if God give it to you, you're ready. You're ready. You know right. what I'm saying? He wouldn't have gave it to you otherwise. Mm. That's just what it is. Yeah, man. What yeah. about you, Dan? Danny boy. Man, I'm already famous. Sure. Right. Bro, <laughs> <that's> true. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> I'm the nah, man. Uh, am I ready for fame? I think I don't. Know, I think I have. I have, think I have everything that I need. 
first of all, like fame is not something that I'm chasing. That's not something that I want for myself. Mm-hmm. Or, you know what I'm saying? Even though, like, I feel like I'm disciplined enough and I'm like, I don't know. If, if I got famous at like 31 or something, I feel mm-hmm. like, like I'd be at the age where I'm, I'm like solid enough in who I am as a person. And like my, my circle is so close and they know me really, really well mm-hmm. so that I won't let the fame or the industry taint who I am as a person. You know right. what I'm saying? So I think in, in that regard, yeah, I think I'm ready, but it's just not something that I want for myself. Like, I kind of want to be the guy in the industry that's like, oh, we need keys, we need sax, we need this ki- this type of production, we need this to be scored, let's go to Dan. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of fame. I want, like, industry fame. Like, I want, yeah, like, 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 your peers, like, word. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, I want, like, hard. professional I'm notoriety. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know that I have the energy for fame. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it's another yeah, thing. I, yeah. I, I don't got it, man. Can't it's grocery levels shop anymore. Too, like, like, it's level, so it's like the fame. Okay, say I see tier one fame, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you can go to a store and be all right. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to, you know, worry about paparazzi or whatever. <laughs> and then it's tier two. It's Yo. like, I, th- I think the highest tier is like Travis Scott. He'll go to like, I think it was a, a, a video on Instagram. He was buying some gum and like the whole, all these kids was just like trying to, you know what I'm saying? Get autographs and stuff like that. It's just like. I don't want that much. Yeah, you know what I'm nah. saying? Like, I'm good off all that. I'm too low-key. Like, I'm too low-key sure. to, like... You're trying to eat dinner with your girl at some restaurant. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I'm just trying to eat dinner with my girl. Yeah. Man. I don't want to sign That's anything. Okay. Like, yeah. I think, I think, yeah, it's crazy. This question could be different for so many different people, bro. Right. Because yeah. there's people that truly embrace that mm-hmm. and feed off of that and love that shit. Yeah. And it's like, I just... I'm like, I don't know if I'm even... I'd be the first person to tell you like blue checks and all that shit on Instagram. All that, I don't give a fuck about none yeah. of that. So it's like good luck. Yeah. Like good luck if you're trying to dangle that in front of me as the piece of cheese. I really right. can care less. Like, but yeah, there's different levels. I remember when I was like six, Lisa Ray had uh, was it Issa Ray or Lisa, Lisa Ray. Lisa Ray. Oh, okay. She was in uh like the San Diego parade, the, okay. the MLK parade. Yeah. yeah. And uh. My dad and my mom was in the car. It was right after Players Club shout came out Lisa, or some shout shit. Shout out Lisa Ray, man. I, 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 yeah, you I, feel I, me? Bay, I, I, so, yeah, you feel me? <laughs> Sexy Lisa, you feel me? Auntie Lisa, whatever, mom. <laughs> Milf, all that. So, what? what? Um, <laughs> I snuck that in there. <laughs> hey, yo, that was real smooth, yo. Hey, so. Um, whisper that joint, bro. She was in a parade, and I remember my mom and my dad was like, that's the. My well, dad's like, snap, <laughs> snap famous. Yeah. Ah, ah, and like, she's she looking in the car, like, like, they were like, my mom was like, Lisa, my dad was like, Lisa, 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 they was like, Lisa, and she was like, you finally figured it out, huh? Oh, damn. You finally figured it out, huh? Like, hey, like, I was just like, yo, what if you out and about, like, because I know there's people that's like, you know, you don't know who I am, like, I, you know no, what I'm saying? Like, no. Fixing their hair, you don't, you don't know yeah, who I am? Yeah, yeah, Fuck, no, I don't know who you are, like, you know what I'm saying? What I don't want to, I don't want to get to that point. I don't want to get to that point. Okay, yeah. I don't want to get to that point. There's a point of fame where, like, you gotta, like, you yeah. feel me? I think, like, even Tom Cruise still says, hey, hi, I'm Tom Cruise. You know, like, he still introduces I mean, himself. Yeah, like, that's, that's, that's that can a, be something different for Tom Cruise. Why are yeah, you saying that? Tom Cruise is just different. It's like, I'm so. Tom Cruise. Like, hi, I'm Nestle John Tom Cruise. Like, yeah, I know who you are. Lil, Lil Dicky does the same thing. You know what I'm oh, saying? Like, like this I can see. I understand. I yeah. he and he doesn't like introduce himself name. as Lil Dicky. He introduces his name as he introduces himself as Dave. You yeah. know, it's okay. like, hey, I'm Dave. How you doing? You know? Marketing. I'm not going. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, this is this is before the show came out though. This Marketing. was like you got a show after that manifested it. <laughs> true, true. I remember one time we was we was down in the IE word. So this was like a glimpse of fame. It was me, bro, and we was with somebody else, and we was out to eat. We was outside chilling. Just chilling, and then this oh, couple, no. this couple come up to us, and, and like this is just kind of, kind of weird. I don't know if they was just like approaching slowly because it was like COVID time or uh, whatever. But it was, you know, we outdoors eating and stuff, and they getting close, and we're just like, I don't know what's about to happen right now, because uh, like, they're just slowly creeping on us, <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, I'm so sorry, but um, are you Warren G? And just like, literally, I'm just like, what, bro? <laughs> like, while we're eating, like, we're scared to come up to us and everything. Just like, are you Warren G? Wait, what? Yeah, I swear to oh, God, okay, I well, <laughs> are you, are you I get called Jason Derulo all the fucking time. Like, <laughs> are you Jason wow. Derulo? Are you LeBron James? <laughs> <laughs> literally, like, you know what I'm saying? So, I feel like in, in that arena, like, 
I'm not ready for that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, I feel you. Or even being famous and being mistaken for somebody else. Mm. That's worse than just being famous. Yeah, you man. feel what I'm saying? I, I feel you. Yeah. yeah, this shit all laughable to me. Keep it a bug. Yeah. <laughs> This shit, funny. Dude, this, this shit is, is funny, man. This shit is a TV show. Mm. Literally, every day, every session is like something else funny happens. I'm just like, I'm at the point now, I just point this shit and I look at bro. Mm. <laughs> 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 like, some dude just walked into our session, like, high step. Some dude high stepped into our session yesterday on his tippy toes. And I keep looking at him. I'm like, what's up, man? And he's like, um, he's like talking about blah, blah, blah. And I, I caught his eyes again. I was like, what's up, bro? And he was like, no, no. And like shook his head and he's like, no, no, no. And I kept doing it. By the third time, he like walked out and he's like, all right, y'all. I'm like, I'm off what? this dude. Like, yeah. I'm off of your end. Like, what the right. fuck? I said what up to the dude twice. Like, and twice. And he's like, no, he's like, no, 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 no. That's not what I'm here for. That's <laughs> why. That's not what I'm here for. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, no, not you, nigga. Yeah, yeah bro. No. <laughs> Literally, bro. Literally, bro. That shit was crazy. But the engineer that was engineering our session just so happens to be that nigga. I didn't know that. Yeah. I went on his page. I'm oh, he was, oh you lit. I'm snapping on a nigga in the booth and all kind of shit. Like oh, yo, damn yo, I'm getting at him crazy because niggas not Louis fast out here, bro. Yeah. So I'm I'm like yo yo, yo what was that? He's, he's like huh? It, yeah yeah. Louis just quick. Yeah yeah. So yeah man, whole time he's that he's that. Yeah. He start yeah toying with my vocals. Pause. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, bro. That nigga was the truth. I feel you. All right, uh, I'm asking another question from Instagram uh, at Isabel Sheba on IG. She asks, "What kind of music do you listen to that people will least expect?" I'm gonna start. Um, like I listen to a lot of soundtracks from movies. Oh, like I used to buy, I, like when I was young, I used to buy, like, go to Walmart. Buy the CD of like Harry Potter, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings. That's gas. Um. Finding Nemo, Kung, Kung Fu Hustle, like all those movies I used to watch. Kung Fu Hustle? Right? Yeah, man. It's kind of lit. Classic. Listen to it. But, um, yeah. Top five soundtracks all time right now. Huh? Top five soundtracks all time right now. Of course, Star Wars, Phantom Menace, Episode One, um, Lord of the Rings. Okay. Um, uh, Speed. Like Word. With, with uh, really? Keanu Reeves. Keanu. Yes. Sandra Bullock. <laughs> yeah. Speed. Um. Uh, ba 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 ba. Finding Nemo. That shit's lit. Finding, Finding Nemo, Nemo has some shit. Uh, yeah. Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo. That's up there with Lilo and Stitch, though. That's a good one too. Yeah. That's not my top five. That's good. Though. Yeah, that was one. And uh, probably Toy Story. I was just wow. about to say that, bro. Yeah. All right, Toy all right, Story. all right. That yeah. was. But you left off waiting to exhale. Doctor Doolittle. You it's left, a lot of them. You man. left off a uh, uh, Space Jam. Mm. You left off. I mean, but I, rightly it's so. Lot, and then you, <laughs> what? Yeah. Loving basketball for sure. Brown mm. sugar for sure. For sure. Yeah, <sighs> D'Angelo did his thing on that one too. Damn, that was D'Angelo, yeah. huh? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of that one. Wow, there's a there's a cartoon movie. Harry that, Potter. You said that one though. You, I did. Low key, yeah. I think right. one of the one of the Harry. Lord oh, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. Yeah, okay. Is what you said? Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. Yeah. Anything John Williams, just like. Dan would say Tarzan had a wild soundtrack, bro. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Phil Collins. Yeah, yeah. All right. What about y'all? What, 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 uh, what, uh, what music do you listen to that people would not, would least expect? I like Kegos. <laughs> Man, um, least expect. Um, I listen to so much. I'm like, what would people like not expect mm-hmm. me to listen yeah. to? Um, I would. I mean, that's a hard question. Yeah, because okay. I mean, well, I don't know. I can't speak for everybody, but you know that like punk rock, like the alternative rock mm. era, like any day of the week, I'll throw Green that day, on. Some yeah. Green day, Green day, some Green Day, Paramore, Penny yeah. Disco, all, like all those guys. Like, I'll, mm. I'll rave to that in the crib. Oh, that's right. Dan. <laughs> that's Dan all day. Mean? Like, so Yo, panic is the see, truth. Yeah. See, so I don't know if that's unex- like unexpected, but that would probably be mine. Okay, you know, I think okay, everybody right. probably expect everything else I listen to. Yeah, I'll be listening to cartel music and shit. <laughs> yeah, De La Chevy and shit like that, you know? I'll be really giving it up. Oh, shit. Yeah, that, that shit go crazy. I didn't actually... I've, I've, I've heard about it, but I've never I've never listened to we it. Sampled, we sampled uh, one. I won't say the name, uh, you know, but we sampled <laughs> one. <laughs> um, 
for awesome. a really crazy song that's about to drop. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you catch it, you catch it. But it's so blended in there, you wouldn't even catch it for real. Like it's uh, it's, yeah. it's one of those. But yeah, I'll be listening to Banda music. Is what it's called. Banda. Mm, okay. Yeah, that shit is. Yeah. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just like a homie, man. Like it's it's a lot of it's a lot of metal. I think I don't know. I kind of go through seasons for the most part. Like, like I'll definitely go through like a trap season and like an R and B season and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But um. Like tip, typically, like around the fall and stuff. That's like metal season, man. So it's a shit ton of metal. Uh, He's AJ. <laughs> yeah, the but engineer no, I with, that. I don't know if you ever heard of like Born of Osiris. They heavy as fuck, man. It's so. Good. Oh, that's heavy metal, right? Yeah. Uh, we butter the bread. It's just uh, this German band. Yeah, fucking tight. Uh, yeah, we right. The bread. No, it's, it's, yeah, we it's butter so. the bread. <laughs> like, I listen to them just because of that. Okay. Yeah, no, they're they're it's, that shit is fucking heavy. It's like um, a Ben Sevenfold. I'm not a huge fan, man. I'm not either. See, that's too mainstream for Dan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's too mainstream Bruh, for Dan. I knew, I knew we were going to get here. <laughs> Who sing? Do they sing The Reason? Um, is that, and the reason is you. No, that's... Nah, Who is that? That's way older than they yeah. said. Wow. <laughs> Who is that? Yo. And oh, the reason sh- is that you. Was, yo, that was a... Uh, damn, I was in elementary school when that shit dropped. Yo, that shit was crazy. No, that shit is hard, man. I'm not, I'm not mad at it. Right. Is that Creed, bro? It might be. I don't know. It I don't want to talk on my ass, man. It might be. I'm going to have to Google You like it. System of Down? I do. I I do. Not, not so much anymore. I do. But you like, like System yeah. of Down? Yeah. I, like I, I, I don't listen to them anymore, but like they're still tight. I got, I got put on. BYOB was that shit when yeah. it came out. You know? I got put on to System of Down uh, playing uh, Tony Hawk. Yeah. Ooh. Let's yeah. see if that. you like System, you'll like Rage. See? Like, yeah. Y- y'all like yeah, a Rage Against yeah, the Machine? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Rage Who sings TNT? What? From the Tony Hawk Pro Skate, so you ain't even play video games. <laughs> bro, <laughs> yeah. I didn't hear what you said. No, no, no. I said, who sings TNT? It's oh, a I song called know. TNT that used to come on the, the load up menu. Uh, like, yeah, TNT. Yeah. Oh, damn. Like, who's um, saying was that? Was the first one? The first Tony Hawk? Which one was it? I don't know. I, was one, I played it on PlayStation. Or the it was Pro original yeah, PlayStation. Yeah, he did up to like five. That was either one or two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. I forget. It's one of the ones. I got yeah. hip to ska through Tony Hawk, man. Like a uh, Goldfinger, uh, Superhead, and all of them. Like yeah, I remember yeah. Superman from the. Uh, yes. Yeah. Here I am doing that. That shit is hard, man. <laughs> it's, it's, bro, it's like Madden it's like punk with horns and shit. That shit is hard, yo. Madden did. Madden had the joints for sure. Yeah. But uh, yeah, a lot of Brazilian shit, and. Mm. That's that's what I need to get hip to is the uh, Bossa Nova, yeah, yeah bro, Bossa, Samba, sure. all of it, man. Yeah, I need to get yeah. Hip to all that. And yeah, that's like one of my one of my main like when I was first learning like guitar and just piano, that was one of my main my, uh, influences genre wise was Bossa Nova. Like, shout out to Sango for mastering that word. Mm-hmm. He's really broadening that for the for those who don't listen to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm those for sure because <laughs> he kind of introduced it to me for yeah, sure. For sure. All right, uh, I'm gonna ask like I, I throw in like random questions yeah. during the podcast. Who's your favorite comedian? <laughs> I think I'll, I'll start. Go ahead. Of course, Dave Chappelle. Nice. That's just my. I'll, I'll say top three. I, I feel like top we three. can't say Dave Chappelle because Dave Chappelle should be everybody's favorite comedian. Right. Besides Dave Chappelle, who's your favorite comedian? Yo. <laughs> right. Um, and Richard Pryor. Just about this yeah, no. <laughs> Those are like go to like we like that. That's, that's Eddie like, Murphy. Eddie Murphy, bro. Okay, that's fair. Eddie Murphy. Very fair. Yeah. What you uh, that day? I got too many, man. I can't. Come on, I man. Come on. Uh, you Who's your favorite? One. I got. All right, so Pryor and Chappelle aside, I gotta go. Ralphie May. Mm. Bill Burr. Mm-hmm. Uh. <sighs> shit. What's his name? Uh. Gerard Carmichael. Do you remember him? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Yo, remember, that dude bro. was fucking funny. He's kind of like dry humor, though. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I love shit like that, so I can't even be. Yeah, upset. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you watched the Carmichael show. You was like, you was into that. No, I, I wasn't into the Carmichael show. I mean, neither, bro. Yeah, I don't think I don't think anybody it got one season. I don't yeah. think. Yeah. Was, <laughs> I don't think anybody was into it for real, man. Yeah. Uh, who else we got? Mitch Hedberg is like an old favorite. of Yeah, mine. I like Mitch. Like Mitch. is cool. Uh, honestly, like just a shit ton of like dry comedy. I like Rookie Gervais a lot. Okay. You know, just like the dry dudes. I feel. You. Uh, I said Patrice O'Neal. I oh, said that. Shit, I forgot about Patrice. I said Patrice O'Neal because, like, much like in the music game and in the whatever game, when somebody dies, 
you could see like people kind of eat off of like mm. whatever's left on that yeah. plate when somebody right. leaves and they run off with it however they do it uh-huh. but it's like i always remember the originator of certain styles and shit so i remember jerry levine like on youtube like taking that it was like different youtube dudes early mm-hmm. on that was like taken from patrice o'neill yeah you know what i'm saying yo, granny patrice kept it real yo. he kept he it real as fuck you know what i'm saying <laughs> and so Obviously, Dave should like the older I got, uh, I I understood what Dave was trying to say because you can't say that at twelve. I didn't get with the, me. Right. I wasn't fucking with Dave Chappelle at twelve mm-hmm. years old. I was fucking with the more performative comedians. Yeah, that's throwing Sometimes. shit and doing. You know uh, what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Making their eyes big and she's doing all that. <laughs> you know, I I who, liked Mike Epps for a minute too. Who? Mike, Mike Epps, Epps for a minute, but then I realized, Yo. you know what I'm saying? He's literally like Richard. Like he like tries to be Richard Pryor too. Mm. I can see that. So then I end up. Doing my Richard Pryor like research, mm-hmm. and now I'm like, oh, let me go watch Eddie Murphy Raw. Oh, he like Richard Pryor too. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's just I, I lied though. I said Eddie Murphy's Cat Williams. My bad. Whoa, Whoa. I, I like, hey, it's Cat Williams. Cat, yeah, Cat's your favorite comedian. He's, He's another there. person that gets it like Dave Chappelle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's up there. He like at first, it. when I first heard, him, I was like, oh, he cursed too much. A lot Bro, of times, I felt the same way, man. A lot of people time, a lot of times, some comedians use cursing to like be funny it's like okay mm-hmm. you can't be funny without cursing but like the more i listen to him I'm like oh you're funny you're funny oh, i feel like i i feel like as i got older i enjoy cat williams less and less and really less and less yeah man. it was obviously mm-hmm. for me yeah because no because i mean like you said like he curses a shit ton but i felt like he was saying fuck every other word mm-hmm. but like only one in three jokes were funny to me as i got older you know what i'm saying so i was just like and when you're young like somebody swearing is always always kind of fun yeah kinda yeah funny. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. Maybe I would I- have to say my favorite comedian is probably Bernie Mac. Mm. Yeah. That's Bernie was hilarious. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was legend. R.I.P., man. Right. Yeah, for sure. Even with Chappelle and Pryor, I, I, I'd really? probably still pick really? Bernie. Oh, Bernie Chappelle? was just like, he was, yo, he's just so funny to me. And it was like almost like he wasn't trying to be like. Him downstairs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's downstairs. classic. Like <laughs> I'm going to get some back and cut. He had, the, he, had the, <laughs> he had the best Kings of Comedy joint. Yeah, yeah like, he, facts. He, facts. Yo, he Great said, storyteller. Well, the Great Kings, storyteller. he had the best one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, But Cat is one of my one of my favorites as well, too. And I yeah. like Kevin Hart earlier stuff was was uh, super his funny. Earlier stuff was hilarious. Yeah, it's super funny. His first two Netflix specials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they weren't Netflix specials, but you know. No, no, yeah. funny. Those, those are wild. Yeah. Ke- yeah. Kevin Hart is like, he's like pop music. Yeah. To like, he is now, yeah, The pop definitely. music of comedy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Kevin Hart today is kind of like what a Dan Cook was like. And like he's like that kind of pop in the beginning, man. Yeah, Bruh, yeah. his "She Ain't Got No Nipples" bit is probably <laughs> yeah. the funniest yeah. bit I've heard in my when life. I heard it man. for the first. I just remember how I felt when I first heard. Yo, I almost uh, it was myself, the man. it was the the uh, the rich dad laugh that like that shit. Oh, for yeah, me, yeah. that kind of just that just kind of just took me out. I was like, this is probably one of the funniest like well set up jokes uh-huh. relatable as fuck <laughs> I ever yeah, heard. Man. Like. But I used to, I like uh, Lavelle Crawford too. I don't know if you guys know Lavelle's funny. Lavelle yeah. Crawford. Yeah. Like, I mean, he's not really. That's not really my style. I get, I get over the fat jokes, but I fuck with bro. But he, I, his delivery, so delivery, well, yeah. delivery is important. Yeah, and he changed his voice too. Like um, when he's telling like stories and things like that. So yeah, like the fat jokes. That's his bag. But I'm just like that's his bag. But then when him and Bruce Bruce are both on the scene, it's like, well, yeah, goddamn, yeah, yeah. who's gonna out fatty? Just like who? <laughs> Bruce, clearly, Bruce Bruce was Bruce Bruce was the. Front. Bruce was roasting niggas like before, you know what I'm saying? Mm. He had it, but I yeah. You seen that video on YouTube with it's it's La, it's Lavelle Crawford and Mr. Brown or, or David Brown, whatever. Yeah, and they like that's going back and week. forth. He had him on stage and yeah, yeah, bro, that was funny. That's like on the spot. Yeah, you feel yeah. Me? That's like uh, that's like the jazz. Like you just we call it improvising. You, know yeah, you got to throw like all the funny people in the room and just have them just come up with shit on the spot, and that's how you really figure it out. Yeah. Low key, Jamie Fox too. Oh, like he, I think he's. I think his comedy is very unique and and mm. funny. I like when he brings music into it as yeah. well too. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So I gotta give him give him like a notch that, for that. Sure. And usually, like I don't like comics like that. The ones like bring guitar on stage. You mm. know what I'm saying? I'm just like, this is kind of corny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Jamie yeah. Foxx did, and I was like, this is actually fucking. Is cool. that yeah. Yeah. This is hilarious. Yo. So we only fuck with black comics. I mean, no. Nah. Cause Dan, cause Dan Cook had a run. 
Yeah, he did. No, he definitely had the a vicious circle. He was the first person I ever seen standing in the middle of a stage with the whole audience. You talking about vicious circle? Cool, yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I ain't never seen no shit like that till yeah, yeah. I watched Comedy Central and seen his special. Uh huh. Oh, he's yeah. funny. He yeah, yeah, he's real funny. I, I just don't know. Very animated. You exactly. Know what I'm saying like, exactly. I'm trying to think. Uh, I like Mitch Hedberg too. Um, yeah, I said Ralphie Mae, Bill Burr, oh, Mitch true, Hedberg, true, 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 true. You named all uh, white people. All white actually. guys. Yeah, yeah who's up? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what oh, the yo. fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you say all flip? Yeah, I said yeah. you up. Yeah. <laughs> nah, <laughs> I said Dave Chappelle and Pryor first. All right, all right, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> he said us up. He like, let me uh. <laughs> all right, oh um, my guys. Oh, what's that? What's a fluffy? Uh, fluffy. Uh, uh, uh Iglesias. Uh, Gabrielle. Yeah, oh, yeah. Gabrielle. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. He's, funny. he's funny. He's funny. Yeah, he does fluffy. like the voices. Yeah, that is his name. Yeah, fluffy, Mister Fluffy. All right, um, would would you? Who would you want to play you? In a movie about your life, bro. I'm so goofy. I'll get the most least, the most <laughs> least nigga that look like me <laughs> to slam his hands on the table at Atlantic and be like, "What happened to my masters?" <laughs> like, <laughs> get Denzel, Yo. get Denzel to wear a bucket hat Yo. or some Yo. shit. You bro, you got to get Michael Sarah to play you in the <laughs> dude. <laughs> that, there you go. That, there you that's go. <laughs> like, like Lil Michael Dicky Sarah and Chris Brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do some shit like that. Like, Yo. have somebody the most least suspect. I might get Ombre to be me. Yo, Honestly, like you feel me? Funny, funny. What happened? What happened, Louis? So we not going. You know what I'm saying? Like all kind of shit. I just really take it. There. She got grills in for no. Reason. You know what I'm saying? Got grills. Like she's dressed like Ombre. They're like, wait, Ooh. hold up. And Ombre Ooh. as Fable. That'd be hilarious. That should be funny as fuck. I do some shit like that for sure. I think for me, I, I think uh, Terry Crews next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nah, like, uh, maybe like Lance Gross or somebody like that. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like... Lance serious. You know He's like, y'all kind of looking like... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we both dark wanted to be... <laughs> <laughs> he trying to get the Oscar. He trying to get his man he set up. He to be as on point as possible. Ain't no <laughs> Yo, Lance We got to get this right, guys. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, man. <laughs> he throwing a fit. You know what I'm saying? Man, I think the only person... <laughs> to, I think, y'all, honestly... I'd probably get Jamie Foxx to play me in a in a movie. I can see that. I feel like he has the range. Yeah, you know I mean, give him something. I feel, to, yeah, I feel. You know I, I feel mean, that. give him something to aim towards. Like, if you could play me, like if you could play cello, if you could play anybody. You know what I'm saying? You know what so. I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, you see it, Jay? I did, I did, I did. I did. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. What you saying? I think Taj Mahal. I knew you were gonna say that shit. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, yo, I knew you were gonna say some shit like that, bro. Yo, people used to call me smart guy all the time. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, and then what's called, when I had like a shit ton of hair, like high school musical came out and I got, oh, co- yo, I got Corbin Blue for the rest of my fucking life, man. I know, like just any deadpan light skin dude, like Jaden uh. <laughs> like Jaden Smith. I don't know, man. <laughs> nah, we'll get, I feel like Taj Mahal is so corny though. Bro. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I hope he's doing something really positive, like right now. I think he only does positive things. Bro, like, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't I thought I saw him on a sitcom, if I'm not mistaken. He was on What I Think, What I Like About You. Nah, this is, uh, this is what, what I, I Like more. About You. It was a show that used to come on ABC Family called What I Like About You. Oh, no, I think, I, yeah, I think you, that's what it was called? Yeah, it was something. Yeah, shit. I think it, I gotta look this up. He was like a dad or some shit. Yeah. Like, what? Mm, yeah. <laughs> Top, first of all, smart guy is not a dad right yo, now. That's, I, mean, I would yo, be so chill. For real? Top, what I like about you. That sounds familiar, though. It was, yeah, dude. It was, sounds mad familiar. Is that I'm tripping or is it that? It's is some. It, it's, is that one black dude that be oh, for no. Nick Cannon? Is Nick Cannon's doppelganger? Yo, it's Wesley Jonathan. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Wesley yo. fucking Jonathan, a.k.a. Nick Cannon. I know we he all looks had the Mandela effect over that nigga. like Nick Cannon, yo. But it oh, is yeah, Nick Cannon. Yeah, yeah. They're the same person. That is but kind of, that's funny. Sweetness. Man. Wait, but there there is a show. That I, this is not called that. But I know what you're talking about. And it's on ABC Family, right? Yeah, some shit like my mom was watching some shit like that. Taj Mahal. What is yeah. he doing? Bro, I'm telling mm-hmm. you, he's only doing positive things. Bro, like, yeah, I hope he's doing like a... I hope he runs like a non-profit where they just recycle... <laughs> that might be on... Like just, that might be on brand for what Taj Mahal. recycle right, diapers all day or something. I went on his IG. <laughs> Panel. He's chilling, bro. Yeah. He don't even act no more on anything. 
right. Um, mm-hmm. at the Drusif on IG asks, "What's your go-to hot sauce? I know you're a hot sauce connoisseur." Oh yeah, definitely. But that depends on the meal. Oh, facts. Talk about you it. You know what I'm saying? Facts. You can't do like yeah. Louisiana on Mexican food. <laughs> nah, I feel you. I don't really work. You. you know what I'm saying? Tapatio is questionable on, uh, on Mexican what's food. What's your go-to hot sauces for, for let's say, soul food, Mexican food, and then... All right. Asian? Yeah, so, I'll say Asian. So soul food, go-to hot sauces, Louisiana. Okay. That's that. I feel Anybody that. got Frank's Red Hot and they're trying to serve that with soul food, just look at them crazy. Like, You see who's in them commercials. <laughs> you know who that's for. You, know and sh- you feel that. me? You know who puts that shit on. <laughs> you know exactly who. That shit on everything. And so. <laughs> <laughs> and a Bible uh, commercial. Bro, what? It was, it was. That old white lady. All right, so. Mexican food. The house Mexican, uh, the house uh, hot sauce. I feel you. I'll say the house Mexican food restaurant hot sauce. Yeah, yeah that shit. Whatever it is. Usually green. The uh-huh. green. Yeah. The verde go crazy. Yep. Homemade verde from the, from the you know what I'm saying? So, LA is that shit, man. Yeah. And then what was the other shit? Um, that's a Chinese. Asian? Asian? Oh, yeah, yeah, Asian, Asian. Oh, that's sriracha. That's an easy call. You can't. Korean uh, every time, man. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Or the little chili. They got the chili paste at the table. Yeah, yeah, I'm not I'm not scared to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't scared of that. I am. <laughs> I but you never put like the chili oil in some ramen? That is that crazy. Is yeah, that's, that's dope. Or on that's beef and broccoli, that go bro, crazy too. So yeah, good, man. That's fine. Yeah. I say for me, I, I think soul food. Um, Texas Pete. Uh, I'm basic. No, I'm basic too, man. The Texas Pete, man. Texas Pete on fried chicken bus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll see my kitchen with, with, with ketchup, so I can't even. I say that's a kitchen. Yeah, I, I eat my chicken with ketchup, <laughs> so it's like ketchup and hot sauce every time. I bro. don't even fuck with hot sauce for real. Uh, shut. <laughs> A uh, uh Mexican tapatio, yeah, yeah, tapatio or, 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 or the green or the green or the verde sauce. You feel me? You can't always get that because yeah, on day two the, the top is expanding on that on that shit for sure. Oh, Throw man. that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> that, that's true. That is done. That is fermented overnight, my friend. Never spent the night. Should have never. Sp- <laughs> you got to use that day of. Real talk. Uh, and then of course sriracha sauce for for Asian. Sriracha. I just use sriracha. Yeah, sriracha yeah. bus, man. I listen. I put yeah, sriracha yeah. sauce in like. Ramen noodles, like the the kind you, bro. I I go crazy. Yeah. I go crazy, a little too crazy, bro. Yeah. We are gonna check back in in three years. We are gonna go get a checkup, a colonic. Yeah, we are gonna find out if, if all that was worth it. But yeah, yeah. for now that shit good. Yeah. Bro, I'm so basic with hot sauce, yo. I feel like first of all, I just what is it? It's a colonic. It's all good. Like, yeah. that's, oh, yeah. cause delay your eyes for me. Yeah, so no, good. I got you. But no, I'm just basic as fuck. I didn't start. I didn't start eating hot sauce until college. I just like hated spicy food until college. You good then, man? <laughs> God blessed you. Like, I got ten years on you, bro. I'm gonna have to get a whole bowel replacement, bro. Bro, <laughs> my whole stomach replacement. <laughs> would, would you ever? The would lining the is bowel, done. Like, the would, whole get down. Would you ever be on hot ones? Yeah. Yeah. Bro, yes. I want to try it. That bro. shit easy. I know it is. Yeah, it look, I saw. I saw. Uh. Uh. Oh, dang it. What's Y'all his bugging. name? Bro, they got Tapatio at seven. Only got four more to go. I'm not Is sure. Is it really at seven? Bro, I done seen some weak shit at like five. That's crazy. I'm just scared of the bomb, man. I'm like terrified of the bomb. Because at that point, it's just heat. There's no flavor. It's just like, mm. we just going to burn you for shits and games. That's the one that, with uh, the Idris Elba one. He's like. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, yeah, no. That, that's the one, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that video. That shit was funny because I see him fading in the bed. They made like the edit on the shit. <laughs> Yo, that video was. That nigga said. They were using that shit for everything. Yeah, like, literally yeah. everything, man. Nah, man. I'm glad you started in college, though, bro. It's like smoking. Like I got homies. Yeah, I'm been smoking since I was 11. I'm like, I got oh. 10 years. I got 10 years of life on you, my you nigga. Were, yeah, video fast, games, man. My nigga? Like, it was in the garage smoking at 12. No, nah, fuck. No, I think we had like uh, I went to Norfolk State first, and they had Soul Food Thursdays. Oh yeah, yeah it was like, it was, it was, bro, and it was like. Real, they had like almost no condiments there. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying, but they had a grip of hot sauce, and it was always Texas Pete. And I was just yeah. like, all right, fuck it. Yo, Texas, Texas Pete is Pete. like the staple bro, black yeah. hot sauce. Bro. Is it, bro? Yeah, yeah. I thought it was Louisiana. I thought it was Louisiana. I think too. it's it's Texas, Texas Pete. Pete. Must be like Blue. South. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. on the tabletops uh, in the South. Yeah. Texas yeah. Pete is yeah. Right, sure. yeah, and exactly. crystals. 
yeah, 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 and yeah. crystals. crystals? Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, is that the green green top blue label? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. But I, it's yeah. Texas Pete. Then I see Louisiana a lot of times too. But Texas yeah. Pete on the on you know mm-hmm. East yeah. Coast. Yo, um, that shit is everywhere, man. Yeah. In the um the West Indies, the hot sauce. Yo, I'm saying, yo, is, 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 yeah, like all that is. Bro, if yo, I am gonna do hot on sauce, sandwiches, like, that shit is nuts, bro. Everything, the habanero sauce, the yellow. Yo, sauce. I was just about to, the habanero bro. sauce. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. How could I forget? That's if rare, I'm gonna do bro. it, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go there with it. Like I don't ever see that nowhere. Bro, well, not out here. Makes that shit, bro. Yeah, yeah, not out it's here. So you, it's the grocery store, like a, you, know, you got to go to like an ethnic store. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that shit got me excited right now. My whole thing extended. Why we went talking about that? Yeah, my family makes like homemade like hot sauce in, in, in Barbados. Mm. And every time my dad goes back to the island, he brings back like a case of that shit, man. And it's all like ghetto rigged out too. It's of like, course. bro, it's like a boil like, on like, the top. Bro, it's it's like a Pepsi <laughs> bottle with the label like scratched off and shit, and just packed to the top of hot sauce, mm-hmm. man. And it's wrapped in duct tape so it doesn't mm-hmm. spill on the flight and shit. Oh, man. yo, it's so good. Oh, we, yeah. And it just like stays in the fridge and gets spicier and spicier over, over the time, year. Yo. And, and it it's has like good wine, flavor, dude. Like, it no, is. the flavor is so. I'm saying it's hot and it has flavor, so that's why I fuck with it. Actual, yeah. factual, my boy. Damn. Yeah, I like I like the, that it have like that sweet, sweet and sweet and spicy uh, flavors. You know what I'm saying? Like I have it's, I forgot this hot sauce. I forgot what it was called, but like it had like a little little sweetness to it, but it was also spicy too. So I don't know. I What's your... that too? Like sweet Thai chili Thai. Yeah, yeah. I like those get you some uh, some spring rolls. It's over. I'm gonna take your black card if you answer this wrong. What's your favorite uh, barbecue sauce? Um, sweet baby Ray. Hey, Les, I was just making sure you were black. You know what I'm saying? I was making sure. I had to double check one time. Sweet baby Ray. I didn't know that was a black thing, man. That was just always the barbecue sauce we had at the crib. I don't know. Yeah, sweet baby Ray's, but that's no the idea. go-to. Yeah, there's nothing really cool. Go-to. And then they got like different like sub genres inside the barbecue sauce. They the got brown sugar one. They <laughs> taking off source. Hey, the, what's the one with the, the, the spicy with the? One. Oh, I ain't never had it. Yeah, I ain't never had it. They, but they got like you know hickory smoke wing sauce. Yeah, I'm getting wings after this. Yeah. Right, yeah, I'm about to go spicy hungry, barbecue. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Barbecue. shoot, man. yeah, man. But yeah, um. I'm going to wrap it up. I'm not sure how much longer I got on my camera. But um, follow us on Instagram. Dan. Here we go. At Daniel L. Jackson. (laughs) (laughs) There we go. Daniel L. Jackson. Follow me at Daniel L. Jackson. Let's get it. All right. We got Fabo. Who is Fabo? Uh, Instagram, Twitter. All my handles. Who is Fabo? Here we go. Key. Uh, you got me at keeping it underscore <laughs> me, you know I mean? on everything. Keep it real simple. There we I mean. go. Uh, you can follow me on Maxwell underscore Sensei. Um, also follow the Lobby Call podcast. Um, oh, no. shit. No. <laughs> Lauren. Now, uh, follow the Lobby Call podcast at uh, at Lobby Call podcast up there. You can, you know, we post clips, we post information on the next guest, stuff like that. So follow that. Um, yeah, that's been another episode of Lobby Call. That's a wrap. Stay like that.